Hey, everybody. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of Baltimore Comic-Con right here. It's day three. And this is, I mean, this is the moment you guys have all been waiting for. I'm going to bring on Mr. John Suntress. John, I know this is the panel you have been waiting for the entire weekend. It is by far the most excitingly fun, amazing panel. You got Susan Eisenberg, George Newberg. I want to give you the entire hour. I know Mark Waits is insanely excited about this. So I'm going to let's cut you loose. Man, I'm so stoked about this panel. Uh, so you, you you go at it, man. I'll see you in a little bit. I understand. Poor Chuck is wiped, and that's all right. I'm, I Luckily, I got a nap in. It's good to see everybody. John Such is here from Word Balloon. And uh, as Chuck said, we're all very excited to present Kingdom Come, VoiceOver Playhouse, a very special presentation of the epic story that will be celebrating its 25th anniversary next year. I want to start off and bring in uh, the writer, of uh, this incredible book, uh, he he and Alex Ross made an amazing graphic novel. And uh, let's say, welcome Mark Wade, everybody. Good to see you, Mark. Good evening, John. How are you? I'm doing great. Congratulations! Tremendous conversation with Tom Brevoort. Oh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, really, really great stuff. Uh, let's also bring in uh, the uh, person that I brainstormed with and said, you know, we got to get a good like Superman, Wonder Woman scene. What can we do? And we're like, Kingdom Come. And that was Wonder Woman herself, the animated Amazon. It's Susan Eisenberg. Welcome, Susan. <laughs> Hello. Good to see you. And uh, last but certainly not least, it's uh, the man of tomorrow himself, uh, Krypton's favorite son, George Newburn. Everybody say hello to George. Right. Hello, everybody. My name is George. Sorry. That's it. <laughs> I was going to say it looked like, um, ah, there's Mark. Mark's back. I give you a little uh, interview. I liked it, man. That's fantastic. I liked it. Yeah. So, good. And, and guys, thanks again. You were at uh, the last mainframe Comic Con event uh, with the rest of the Justice League and Andrea Romano. Gave us yeah. a high powered read of some classic scenes. And now we visit some incredibly classic graphic novel scenes, courtesy of uh, Mark Wade and Alex Ross. Good evening, Mark. Yeah, good evening. I, I'm very flattered and very honored that the two of you oh, have joined yeah. on here. Of course. Before we start, Mark. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> Before we start, Mark, a little background on on this story, uh, both behind the scenes and also framing what we're about to hear. So, where you know, I know, I know that it started with Alex writing a right. treatment. Right. Basically, the for those who don't know, Kingdom Come graphic novel from. Geez, we've we've hit our thirtieth anniversary now, haven't we, John? Uh, 25, 25. 25, 25 next year. Yeah, nineteen ninety six is when it came out. Uh, time has no meaning anymore, and. <laughs> It's it's the story of what happens when Superman retires, and 10 years later, he's had to be brought back out of retirement because the young heroes who have come along after him without his inspiration, without his guidance, have just turned the whole world into a big WWE wrestling match, and it's just chaos everywhere, and Superman has to get together with his old comrades and sort of put the world back together before it just goes completely off the rails, and that was that was Alex's basic idea. Alex Ross, the painter, and he came to DC with a basic treatment and a lot of sketches, a lot of a lot of neat notions, but he wasn't a writer by his own admission. So who do you got who knows absolutely everything about DC Comics ever? Well, there's only one guy. It's Mark Wade, is what I was told. So I got dragged in and I was unsure. I didn't know what I could bring to the table. But as we sat there at lunch with uh, Archie Goodwin, who is the initial editor, and Dan Raspler, uh, who was the the other editor? It, it sort of came together. I really, Alex and I started, you know, feeling a bond with each other. We're about ten years apart in age, but we still grew up reading and loving the same sort of stuff—the 1970s DC comics—and that's our era. And we're such big fans of it that, as I have said many times, Alex and I are the only two people in the world who are going to have a 45-minute argument about the Martian Manhunter. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we love reading your guys' books. Absolutely, both of you, Ross and, and Wade. Absolutely, man. So, so putting it all so putting it all together was, you know, it was a about a two year trip. I guess it took it took us about uh, you know a few months up front just to get the story locked in, and then Alex paints uh, with a like a, a stern pace of uh, uh, ten pages a month. So one hundred eighty pages, eighteen months, right down. And and I will never forget. Everything was going swimmingly with the scripting. Everything was going great for the like the first, second, third issue, because nobody had seen it yet. Mm. And before I got the chance to write the fourth, the fourth one, the first one had come out, and it was 
mostly because of Alex, a gigantic sensation. It was just a huge, huge, huge thing. And suddenly I sat down at the keyboard and, you know, the, the figurative, you know, I open my mouth and a feather comes out. There's nothing there. I got, I'm, I got stage fright. And it took me with Alex's help as long to write that fourth one as it did to write everything else because of the stage fright. But I think in the end, it came together pretty well. Absolutely, man. And the great thing is we literally are taking scenes from, I believe, all four chapters. I, I believe all four, yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, and that's that's what's great. And uh, we, we really kept the heavy drama. There's You won't see a happy ending in this <laughs> table read, not to spoil. For those Spoiler! Who know exactly. Yeah. But it really, and, and especially, uh, George, Susan, for you two to play these characters at, at such a great time and give us so many seasons of these characters. First of all, you didn't get a lot of scenes together as one woman no. and Superman, correct? No, uh -uh. no, no. And not where we could actually just chat, you know, like where it was more than just a line here and a line there. I mean, anytime you had a conversation with somebody, it was a treat. So this, beyond, beyond. I, I told you privately that um, when I was trying to immerse myself in this world, in this universe, when I started um, talking more with the fans and trying to educate myself about about DC and this world, the one thing I was told over and over again was you have to read Kingdom Come. And that's where you start. Everything else follows after that. And so to be able to, and I wrote this to Mark, and to be able to read his words and say his words and give voice to his words is such an honor. Um, and I'm just giddy. I'm nervous, but I'm giddy. <laughs> you, you, you were, you were incredibly kind, as are the people you spoke to. I will also say, <laughs> at the risk of this sounding like a mutual flattery se session, as someone who has lived with these characters since he was about five years old, I, both of you, are exemplary. I mean, both of you really do a nice job of embodying what the characters sound like to me, what they feel like to me, and I think I, I'm a fan of both your work on this stuff. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Sure. Thank you. Sure. And truly excited. John, to, we're a to, fan of yours too. Thank you, John. John, yeah, yeah, we, we adore you. Too. Yeah, John. Yeah, yeah. You're. Yeah, we love you, John. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're very kind. That's very lovely. Uh, uh, and we've as <laughs> we've assembled uh, the league. It looks like well, we've got a good audience. Uh, shall we start, everybody? Let's do it. All Let's right. You'll, you'll, you'll uh, forgive me. I am in the union. I'd like to point out, but I will. I will take care of the reporter. You will be the yeah. You will be the reporter comments. Okay. Uh, oh, you're going to be the yes. reporter. Okay. okay. Reporter being played by John. Well, okay. I, good. I, I was a CBS news reporter for several years here in <laughs> Chicago, so I'm no Clark Kent. No, nope. John. Uh, you know. John and right. I have our radio background. Yep. <laughs> so all right. Yeah. If we're ready, uh, by all means, let's begin. Uh, let's raise the curtain. Okay. Scene one: the Kent farm in Smallville, Kansas. A tentative Wonder Woman approaches a non-costumed, graying Superman. He is out of uniform, in overalls, lifting a tractor with one hand and carrying wood in the other. He hasn't been in costume in 10 years. Hello, Clark. Ugh. Hello, cow. Diana, haven't seen you in months. What's bring, what brings you to the farm? The vain hope that you're not still here. These are my roots. You can't live forever in solitude. I'm Superman. I can do anything. Except apparently face your fear. I'm not afraid of him. I didn't mean him. I meant Cal. You've lost so much since I first met you. Earthlings die, Diana. You know that. Please, Clark. I mean Cal. They were your parents, and she was your wife. Don't call them earthlings. I have work to do, Diana. Here, things grow. Listen to me, damn it. I've come with news from the outside, bad news. It's shaken the world. Cal, he's out of control. I tried to tell them that 10 years ago. And they didn't listen, I know. Stop punishing them. I'm not interested. I see. Do you live in nothing but lies? Here are two words. See if they sound familiar. Truth. Justice. You can't have completely forgotten them. Ugh. Just see for yourself what he has let happen to the world. That's all I ask. 
and steal yourself. Viewer on. Out of thin air, multiple screens appear with news flashes depicting a nuclear disaster in the Midwest. One caused by the Justice Battalion led by the hymn Wonder Woman was referring to, anti-hero Magog. You are off. Cal, please. Our generation takes its lead from you. We always have. You must face this. If you don't, neither will the rest of us, and it will just go on. You're wasting your breath. There's nothing I can do from here. Go back to your island, Diana. You're safe here. You're safe there. A disappointed Wonder Woman flies away. Scene two. After their conversation, Superman begins to pay more attention to current events. More reckless battles between immature heroes and villains cause more damage and destruction. The carnage forces Superman back into costume and action. The old Justice League reforms under his and Wonder Woman's leadership. They hold a press conference to explain their strategy to correct the world's issues. Good afternoon. Many of you may remember us. We've been away for a while. That was our mistake. In our absence, a new breed of metahumans has arisen, a vast phalanx of self-styled heroes unwilling to preserve life or defend the defenseless, a legion of vigilantes who have perverted their great powers, who have forsworn the responsibilities due them. We have returned to teach them the meaning of truth and justice. Together, we will guide this new breed with wisdom and, if necessary, with force. Above all, we will restore order. We will make things right again. Will there be others? Our ranks will grow. Are you prepared to shut down those who don't honor your principles? I don't anticipate anyone acting without our sanction. Anyone? Would that include Magog, Superman? Are you truly prepared to confront Magog in light of what he's done and gone on before? Magog will be dealt with if he surfaces, given the consequences of his actions in Kansas. That seems unlikely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming. That is all. The Justice League flies away, leaving in their wake more questions than answers. And a mumbly reporter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ready? Scene three. The Justice League watchtower on the moon. Superman and Wonder Woman sit amidst the vacuum of space. They look down on the earth as only gods can and talk about the past. So then I flew him up to about uh, here and, and I said, you see that beautiful blue marble brainiac? That's my world. Return it now. Did he hear you? Actually, not in airless space, no. But believe me, he got the message. NORAD was back online within five minutes. So did you destroy him? Just short of it. Buried some of his circuitry on Saturn, some on Argo, and the rest inside a Pulitzer in Clark's apartment. <laughs> okay, that's great. You never told me that story before. Gods, those were better days. <laughs> Easier days, anyway. Diana, what's this about being outside, ousted by your own people? When did this happen? Shortly after you went into seclusion. For years, I had been the Amazon's ambassador to the outside world. My mission was to spread a message of peace and order. As the world continued to darken, there was some doubt as to how well I had done my job. My Amazon sisters, my own mother, came to suggest that perhaps I had failed. They actually put me on trial. I pled my case, but in the end, they decreed that I had indeed not changed man's world, that it had changed me. They stripped me of my royalty and my heritage. There may have been some justice to their decision. Do you believe that? The Amazons believe in peace through strength. Too often I relied on an olive branch and not a cestus. I always admired your gentility. You didn't get the job done. You did your best. Then why isn't the world better? There are degrees. How many degrees were you interested in hearing about when you retired? You said it yourself, Clark, Cal. 
We are warriors. We have an obligation to wage combat. Given who we are, Diana, given the power we possess, we have a greater obligation to keep the peace. Only the weak succumb to brutality. Clark flies away, leaving Diana to con contemplate his words and wonder why they didn't see things the same way. Scene four. The situation on Earth has erupted in chaos. There are riots in the streets. Supervillains once captured by the Justice League have seized control over their warders. Wonder Woman has seen enough and, against Superman's wishes, is mobilizing the elder Justice Leaguers to war. She is donning Amazonian war armor, complete with a shield and a sword. Yet another side of you I am not comfortable with. Get used to this one. A soldier unprepared has no business calling herself a soldier. More Amazonian wisdom? Isn't it possible that we've already won the big fight? Once we calm the rioters down, we can instill... Ow! Clark cuts his finger on the sharp blade of Diana's magic sword. You always were a bit vulnerable to magic. Be careful. The sword has a gift. The sword was a gift from Artemis. It can carve the electrons off an atom. And you expect to use it? I expect to be a soldier. I will not sanction lethal force against the rioters. I'm uneasy with the blade. Not all of us have heat vision. There are lines we do not cross. We have rules. And the prisoners don't. That's why they're prisoners. And if they don't remain prisoners, your big blue marble teeters on the brink. You made the decision to incarcerate them for, for the good of mankind, remember? Maybe that was my mistake. Maybe I shouldn't have let the humans decide. No. Your world finally turned completely topsy-turvy. How do we handle this? I, I don't know. Then I do. We're going to confront the prisoners and give them an ultimatum. They must surrender. And if they refuse? Then it's war. But can you have a war without people dying? A disgusted Diana glares at Clark, then approaches him. Her lips brush his with the sound of marble scraping steel. It is a kiss utterly devoid of passion. It is a last farewell. The League flies off to their final battle without Superman. And there you go. Spoilers. Yes, and he, 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 spoiler, he shows up. Yeah, spoiler, he shows up. Well done. Well done, guys. Fun. Thank that you. was that was Thank fantastic, you. guys. It's so great. Thank you. Uh, no, I appreciate it. There's there as I've said to Susan and George and John in emails, there is when you're writing dialogue for the for the page, yes, you want it to sound natural. And yes, to some degree, you'll read some of it out loud to yourself as you type to make sure it kind of sounds natural. But you're not, it's not quite the same as writing for voice acting. Right. And so there are a couple of those places where both of you had a little bit of a mouthful, and I'm sorry about that. But yeah, I mean, you know, hey man, that's a, that, that comes with the territory, and I didn't notice it by the way. But if, but if it's there, you 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 take it in and you and you you navigate. If it yeah, you, you, you know, navigate beautifully. Yeah. Well, and I have to say, when I read it, I mean, there were a couple of words I tripped over, but that's just my my thing, not the words. And I have to say, when we read it and. It, it, it feels very natural to read it as dialogue. Um, so I know that wasn't your intention when you started to write it, to be read and performed by voice actors, but it, 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 fl it flows really easily as That's an great. actor, you know, as opposed to a lot of things you read as an actor that, <laughs> that don't flow right. so easily. So thank you for that. No, uh, that's very nice of you to say. I, uh, I know I had an experience once where I wrote uh, somebody else had done a, doing an audio adaptation of a comic book that I wrote. And I realized that I had written about 50 words in every sentence with a lot of commas. And so <laughs> there was not a single sentence that actor could save in one breath. So right. he, 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 we made our way around it. And, and George, honestly, I was really excited to see both of you do this because again, it's such a different version. I mean, even even things like the Justice Lords, someone mentioned that in the chat. I mean, this really, in that case, it's this alternate universe, Superman. Mm -hmm. To me, this is canon. I know it's not. It's an Elseworlds, technically. But right, it's so right. great to see Superman this far down the road and, frankly, burnt out. And everything yeah. he believed yeah. in, he, he he questions now. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, you know, I, I narrated a, um, 
an unauthorized Superman biography um, about, I think it was about uh, four or five months ago. And I learned so much that I didn't know about the history of Superman, about the guys that started and all the different iterations of, you know, through the silver, the silver era of Superman up till today. And it's, 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 a, it's amazing uh, the, the, the life of, of Superman and how he's been able to just keep on, he just keeps on keeping on. No matter what, even if he's retired, he's coming back. Right. <laughs> well, George, there's something you bring to the role yeah. that I appreciate, and that is that it's, to my mind, there is a humility to Superman. Thank that you. Superman is the last person in the world to call himself Superman. Right. He would. Right. He would. He wouldn't give himself that name. No. No. And and that in fact is sort of the crux of the story is that mm -hmm. super, when Superman retired right. in this story, right, he didn't expect everyone else to retire after him because he's just another, you know, uh, yeah. one of their, one of their peers. Right, but right. if you're, you know, if you're Green Lantern, if you're Flash, you're like, how do I get out of bed the next day? If right. Superman can't make it work, why right. do I even bother? Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. You know, that you, it's, that's the difference between, you know, the DC and Marvel in some respects that these characters are a little more cut and dry, you know, they're, yeah. Superman really does have a, have, there's, there's not a lot of gray. It's, 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 it's good and bad and, and evil versus uh, good. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I try, I've tried to sort of hew to that. And uh, I mean, in the character, I'm sure in my life, I've got a lot of gray, apparently. <laughs> but, um, but uh, um, oh, look what I just found. I just found something in my little studio. There he is. Hey, hey. Hello. Jeez. Deep, 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 deep. There you go. Get some white out to gray his temples a little bit for this. Uh, yeah, right, thing. right, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, Mark, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts about um People, you know, so many writers, there's so much controversy about how Superman is written and is Superman boring? And is he, you know, I, I've always loved the character and I grew up with Christopher Reeve playing the character. So to me, good isn't boring. Um, just because he's not a dark character doesn't mean there isn't some darkness to him and some sadness and some um you know emotional baggage there right, but right. what is your take on writing the character and you know do you enjoy writing superman oh dear god it's like more than anything else in the world when people yeah. tell when other writers tell me boy i find superman hard to write i'm like are you nuts this is this is just like off a log <laughs> yeah. it's what when i approach superman the thing that i keep most in mind is that he's alone right. he is of a kind, he, there is no one else like him in the universe, right. and he's the last survivor of his race, and right, right. that's something that that is the tragedy of the character. That people say, mm -hmm. you know, he's invulnerable, nothing can hurt him, he has no problems, no, yeah, everything is easy. Right. No, that's that he lost his home world, he lost right. his he lost his second right. parents as right. a, as a young man, and so now he and because of the nature of who he is and because he has these powers I mean you have to imagine living in a world where everything is made of spun glass and everything is made out of you know fiberboard and and you can't like just pick be in a pickup basketball game with your pals yes, because you're, you're no, no. No, no, you can't, exactly. you, yeah you can't volunteer to help somebody move because you might sneeze when you lift their couch and you throw right. it to the moon and then so right. you've got it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah right so you've always got to you know that's that's what these are for. You know, this, no, no, the, exactly. I mean, I always thought that he that he you know I don't want to be too sort of uh, you know no serious about it, but but uh, it, he really is sort of a Christ figure in the sense that he's fully man, fully man, yeah. fully God, and conflicted. Like you know, why did you put me in this position? Uh, yeah. You know, what I mean, he's 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 this was thrust upon him, and he's happy to do it. But at the same time, he is conflicted. Like I, I believe that that uh, the the Christ figure was. You know, so yeah. But that's a perfect thing that you mentioned that because in Kingdom Come there is so much. I mean, there's religion. I mean, there's, there's, it is, there is a, there is a religious that's an element of that. To it. Yeah. For, for sure. There's an edge, and it's, and that's mostly Alex, to tell you the truth. I, I am not a spiritual person. I was, I was raised in the deep South with snake handlers and tent revivals and all that nonsense. So, that nonsense. So, when I left the church, boy, I left the church. Mm -hmm. But Alex's father is a minister. Yeah. And he, in fact, was the model for the main character, the narrator that we see most of the story through, mm -hmm. uh, Norman. And we started talking about religion. We started talking about what the touchstones were. And again, not a, not again, a terribly uh, spiritual religious man. But I remember when I was a kid reading a book 
there was a basically a, a YA adaption of the book right. of Revelation. Right. And for like 13, 14, it scared the hell out of me. I remember yeah. this. Terrifying. Pretty, yeah, pretty crazy out there. Yeah. Yeah. And so going back to the book of Revelation and using right. that as as sort of a, a a roadmap for us, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. an informal roadmap for the story worked out really, really well. Huh. Mm -hmm. how, how, what? Where did the idea for the narrator come? That was like that was Alex. That was Alex had come off of a similar project at Marvel, where it was uh, the Marvel universe has told through the eyes of a photographer, just a news photographer over the years, and what and sort of following that guy's story as he looks at the events of the Marvel universe. So Alex was well aware that it works well for him to have a very human character at the center of it, a very normal character at the center of it right. that can be us. And that's where that came from. So Brilliant. Uh, uh, Alex Brilliant. is really, really. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. And again, Sorry, that's John, why I didn't mean to take over and ask a bunch of questions. No, no, <laughs> I, you can, I can, T Mark, will you I'm talk about the Superman for a while? My God, yeah, of course I'll talk about. I'll talk about Superman until it's tomorrow, Susan. Come on. So this is this is a great opportunity for the two of you who 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 lived with these characters for years, yeah. and a guy like Mark who has lived with these characters for yeah. years. So I am out of the way and letting you guys talk. No, it's quite all right. I'll tell you too, Susan, Wonder Woman, I didn't have a handle on until I wrote Kingdom Come, uh, which was very strange. Because again, I loved all these characters when I was a kid. I've been reading DC Comics all my end of life. I know everything about DC Comics. I'm their semi-official historian. I love, there's not a single DC character that I don't like, but Wonder Woman, I never could get a handle on because it was fighting, finding, you know, being an agent of peace by going around and punching people. And I couldn't ever make that work for me. But it really wasn't until Kingdom Come forced me to drill down on that character and sort of seize that dichotomy and realize that, no, she is a warrior. She is she will do things that Superman will not or cannot do. Mm -hmm. So, well, you know, when I was doing Justice League and I've, I've said this many times, Andrea Romano, our, our director um, and our, you know, our casting director and our voice director, Early on, she said, I think even at the callback, she said, you have to understand about Wonder Woman that she is a princess, and but she's also a warrior. And so at, at every time, you know, it, in everything, you have to infuse it with both of those qualities. And when I would be too princess-like, she'd be the first one to say, no, okay, you're, you're losing the warrior. <laughs> and uh, and vice versa. So I mean that that's interesting that you use the word warrior because that was the um, the biggest direction I got from Andrea Romano. Yeah, it's so easy to play Wonder Woman like uh, like Linda Carter, who was wonderful. But that's not you know that's all the sweet and nice parts. That's all the right. the soft edges, and that right. you're able to bring some some toughness to it is paramount. And, and now too uh, with Gal Gadot, we're seeing both sides. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. I, and, and truly, and and that's just so good. God, yes. And also, Mark, really, I mean, this is twenty five years ago, and I think the agency you gave Wonder Woman in this story and the necessary bounce because these are the two guardians of good. Yeah. But but at this crucial time, the Amazonian and Wonder Woman comes forth and it's like, no, this order. You know, we're we're pretending that God, it's very prescient today. In today's society, we yeah. think there's order, but yeah. there isn't. What do we do? Actually, not what do we do. Diana knows what to do. Right. Clark right. is the one that's like, I, I don't know. Yeah. And, and that's, that's really fascinating. Good. Yeah. So, right. yeah. Oh, you know, some, all right. So a couple questions. And I'm, uh, God, truly, I'm so, and also, isn't it fascinating? Because it took uh, Mark and Alex four books, four, four, prestige format comics i don't even remember how many pages mark 48 pages uh, yeah so 180 pages all together there you go i was told there'd be no math today but excellent and <laughs> but yet <laughs> we blew through those scenes in like you know 10 minutes yeah. Yeah. Like and butter. truly that's been the fascinating thing watching these adaptations and i know when they went to azarello uh to adapt uh, the killing joke and he did the the script for uh the cartoon that they produced and it was you know a one-shot graphic novel and the real essence of the killing joke could only be half of a 70 minute movie. Mm. And he really had to invent kind of this first act of the film to, to complement what was there in the original text from, from Alan Moore. So yeah, yeah that's what, what takes up a lot of real estate in comics does not take a lot of real estate on the, on the stage. And mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's. So many I was, people today, when they knew we were going to do this, asked about an adaptation, asked about a film, um, you know, done of the move of the book of the novel. I mean, have you? You must have been approached a gazillion times about doing an adaptation for this. Here's a true story. So, right after this came out, about 25 years ago, DC, in fact, contracted with an audiobook company to do an audio adaptation of the book. And as part of the participation, they didn't have to do this, but it was nice. They sent Alex and I all the audition tapes wow. and, and, you know, rank the, the character, the rank, the actors as mm -hmm. you see them like wow. one through five. And, right. and Alex and I both did this dutifully. We sent them all back. And uh, then it turns out that every single actor that we rated as a five, they cast as a one. <laughs> and it was a nightmare. It was it was well intended people, but holy smokes, it just sounded like a, a golden book. It sounded like a a a, a, wow. a child's book, and it yeah. was cringeworthy. Uh, so, I love that. so now, thank, I'll, I'll gently and, disagree, but okay, Mark, you're the oh, author. God bless you, man. It was just <laughs> do any do any cooks in the kitchen, man. That happens a lot. It was tough. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's so the too. audio book is there, but what about a film? Oh my God, I'd love to. I mean, but here's the thing. I mean, for the longest time, you couldn't do it because, you know, certain studios had options on this character, certain yeah. studios oh, on yeah. this characters. Sure. So now that it's all back under the DC umbrella, then the next yeah. question is, can you do it animated? Well, you can't, you still can't figure out a way to do it exactly like it looks enough like Alex has been what we've been told over the years that we're every year technology gets us closer and closer to where we can do something in animation that has that style or comes close to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're not quite there yet. And then in terms of a film, oh my God, I, I would love that. But again, that's, that's a $500 million film. So I didn't realize about, I mean, it's so interesting. You said that about the animation, of course, mm -hmm. like it has to look, it has what? to look like that. It's not yeah. just enough to have the words there. You have to make it. And so there isn't the technology to, to adapt that not and as, create that. As I have been told, unless people are just, you know, stiff arming me and saying, go away, kid. Right. I think that or, or likely too expensive to kind of, Cause they, you yeah, know, replicate right. Alex's style. I mean, Alex has that great for people, you know, and of course the audience well know, knows this, but it's that great paperback cover romance right, novel right. Yeah. Or, or high science well, fiction style. Well, Alex works off photographs. I mean, he, he actually has, and this is true, he had costumes made for these characters yes. and hired friends he knew or you know part-time actors have to come in and do poses and and he worked off of that that's why the work is so photorealistic but again like like we've been saying that's just that's hard to pull off yeah in, uh, in the animated i know too in uh the collected versions of kingdom come there's so much back matter yes. uh that shows alex's uh, sketching and and character designs and a lot of those uh photographs and uh certainly we we weren't able to present him from a voiceover standpoint in this session, but uh, Alex's uh, art rep, uh, Sal Abenati, another great Chicagoan, plays uh, Captain Marvel, Shazam. And, mm. uh, and and it's great because really, I, I the way Alex was able to see uh, Captain Marvel's face in Sal's face, right. I, I would never think of that. But now that he, and, and literally you see uh, Sal smiling in that way, in that superior way that yeah. Marvel is portrayed, or I suppose Billy Batson is portrayed. Spoilers. 25 years. I don't worry about spoilers. I got to be honest with you. <laughs> but, uh, but truly, and, and it's, it's amazing to see these actors that he found for, for, for you two, and also, uh, you know, again, Batman and, and all the major characters. Fascinating. Yeah. And it's in the book. So I'm looking here for, oh, okay, here's a question for Mark. What can you say about uh, Michael Rosenbaum's Wally West Flesh. Oh, that's great. And 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 folks, truly, any questions for, for George or Susan or, or Mark, anything they work on is fair game. Yeah, but, no. But you know, so yeah, it doesn't have to be came to come stuff. So great question, please. R Rosenbaum, bang on. Fan of his since Smallville. Fan of yep. his since, and here's another true story. J John, you know John Cassidy, yes? Absolutely. One, the, probably the most handsome man in comics. True. <laughs> to the irritation of all of us. And I, we were at a party not long after Smallville had premiered. We were at a big you know, convention party and music's going and everybody's holding drinks and stuff. And Rosenbaum walks in the room and it's like tossing a magnet into a box of iron filings. Every woman in the place just zoomed in on him. <laughs> and I was had the, the presence of mind to look at John and say, 
now you know how we feel when you walk in the room. <laughs> so, uh, but got a chance to talk to him a few times. Smart, funny, and I'm sure, sure, real yeah, he's, great attitude. Yeah, he's a dream. And you know, it's funny because when I, I I said to him once, your manager must has the easiest job in the world yeah. because you just have so much charm and so much talent. You're the easiest actor to sell because you know he just has something so special and he does, he does, you know so and he is flash i mean he he yeah. is he i mean amazing and, and they amazing. never i know they, i wasn't asked but i'm still giving my opinion no, no, no. Oh my no but they and they never technically distinguish if it is barry or wally but we all know it's wally we all know it's wally oh, yeah it's wally. yeah it sounds like wally yeah it sounds yeah. like wally yeah yeah and he's the junior yeah, member of the wally. team and and yeah. just yeah. you know yeah. yeah so i love no truly again that's why I think all of you uh, Justice Leaguers have this tremendous respect from all of us, because unlike uh, Mark's point about the Kingdom Come audiobook casting, really, Andrea really nailed it with all yeah, of you. Yeah, and George, right I want to ask you, um, yeah. because, you know, Tim Daly had his run on the solo right. Superman animated thing. Right. Did you... Did you look at that? Did you study his uh, style I, at I, all? I, I got to be honest. I, I actors are are notoriously um, myopic. I I just went to the audition. I wasn't even aware of Tim Daly's involvement in it or lack of. It just was an audition, and I went, and I got there. Oh, oh, this is for Superman and the Justice League. Okay, just and I did. I didn't hear anything that he was. I was I was replacing him because he was too busy. I didn't hear any of that. I just went and did it. And then I went home and then I had another audition for something else and, oh, you got it. And then I went, oh, oh, okay. Wow. This is, this is cool. This is a, this is a, this is a big deal. This could be a big deal. And then, and then I, I actually, I'd done a TV movie with Tim Daly about, um, got about 15 years ago. So I, we know each other, but, um, and then I, I saw him in another TV show and I said, Hey man, thanks for, uh, thanks for being busy. I, I love this job. <laughs> I think if Tim had to do it all over again, he would have made room in his schedule. Oh, I know. He had had he known, he would have never. Yeah, he, he really it. would have. Yeah. Um, yeah. George, can you tell your Christopher Reeve story? Uh, which one? I've got I've got several, but but the one the, that's like really heartfelt and 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 when you work together. Yes, I did it. My second movie in Los Angeles was um, a movie called uh, Switching Channels, and it was a it was a, it was a remake of His Girl Friday. You know, the yes. the, 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 yeah. the old movie from the fifties or forties, I believe it was. 40s. 40s, absolutely. And, um, Karen Grant and Russell, Russell. Yeah. yeah. It was a, you know, it was a sort of a not a great movie, but but for me, I had a, a good part. I was in it all the way. I played Burt Reynolds' assistant, and I, I was working with Kathleen Turner and Burt Reynolds and Chris Reeve, uh, Henry Gibson for three months in Canada. And I was whatever, I was 22, 23. So I was like, oh my God, I get to go work with Superman. You know, I'm gonna get to work with Chris Reeve. And and um uh which which one the not getting getting the table or the Superman thing which was it? which Superman one? thing Superman uh, because I got another from. but uh, anyway I asked him I said I said Chris is this you know obviously because he was right off the movie and I said does it bug you that people come up to you because they were coming up to him on the street Superman's everywhere we went in Chicago and Toronto I said does it bug you that people do that and he said he said you know. It, at first, it kind of did because you know I went to Juilliard and I thought you know I can do more than this and I should be more than this and what is, and then you know I went through a period of a couple of years when I realized, wow, what an iconic thing this was, and if I do nothing else, it's an amazing thing to be be known for something this this um, classic, you know, and and I I just remember being oh wow that that was a great thing, and I feel the same way. I, I said it's just so odd that I, I never he died before I we got to cross paths again um, and talk about this, but um, it's kind of, kind of uh, surreal and uh, surreal, surreal, surreal for me to get yeah. to do. That. So no, that's, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, there's a great question for, for all of you. Um, Chris asks, uh, who do you believe is the most underutilized member of the main justice league roster? Martian Manhunter, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's, Martian yeah. Manhunter. that's what yeah. I was thinking that's, that's too. That jumped out at me. Yeah. <laughs> and you and, know the thing is that Carl. I mean, he just so you talk about perfect casting. Oh, I mean, my he God. Is, he's, and we all feel that way about him. I mean, that's the thing. He is. He's. He is the kindest, dearest man you will ever meet, and oh, he's so soulful. And you know, I mean, we we all just 
love him so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, he's... Um, and he was, I mean, he did, He had a few, a few moments, right, to shine, but I'd say he was the most underused Yeah, in terms of story. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's the tough character. when you have is seven seven members, yes. right? Yeah, and right. Then my the, God. And then unlimited. And then unlimited. And then unlimited, like, where we had they all oh, had the guest stars, stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. absolutely. No, and truly, so many wonderful writers that you guys uh, oh. had. You know, uh, Mark D. Mateus, Jam D. Mm -hmm. Mateus. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, God, uh, the adaptation of uh, another great story uh, for the man who has everything. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. You know, God, that amazing Alan Moore, Dave Gibbons comic that oh. you guys again. I mean, it was just oh, it was so great to see that yeah. come to life. And of course, uh, the the late great Dwayne McDuffie, yes. who, who yeah. we continue to honor each year. And even it, just watching, even just watching the show, I was watching some old episodes today because I just wanted to, you know, get in the mode, get in, get in there, get the mojo. And um, you know, I mean, I just love all the expressions they gave us. I love all the comedy that got played, not in the line reading, but in the look of the characters. Mm -hmm. And it's just brilliant. I mean. You know, we get a lot of attention as the actors, but boy, I mean, you know, bravo to the writing team and to the directors and that, because that really, I mean, that Bruce, made it. Bruce, Bruce it Tim. Is. Bruce Tim was oh, really, yeah, him yeah. Too. he was, he was really fine tuning everything. I remember the first time we saw that, we did the first season and then we came, I think it's toward the end of the first season, we were at Warner Brothers Studio in the studios and they had some TV set up and we watched an episode and it was the first time we saw the opening credits they're sort of walking in slow motion toward the camera with the yeah. music. And I was like, oh my God, that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, dynamic I, I, partner. I've done a lot of different things in my life. TV movies did it and lots of little things. But when you see a cartoon and you're the guy in the middle walking in slow motion, when don't you that? remember at Warner Brothers? George, don't you remember that the huge poster when you went into the Warner Brothers animation studio yes, where yes. we recorded? And it was just this gigantic poster. Crazy, you, you know, crazy. I, I mean, talk about heady. I mean, it's you just crazy. feel like, you know, like yeah, aren't we really part know. of something so special? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'll go into an audition and they're like, hey, you know I'm on the outside of this building, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You better give me sure. It never worked, actually. But yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, no. if we were that popular, we would have had a reunion. Right. <laughs> the great thing was the original Batman animated series was a big leap forward in animation, both in acting mm -hmm. and yeah. design. And right? exactly, George, as you're describing that opening montage, we knew we were yeah. in for an event. Oh, and I mean, I said this uh, during the Justice League table read the last time you yeah. guys were here for Mainframe. And, and truly, one of my best friends grew up as a comic book fan, got out of the habit started watching the show and his wife caught us watching the show together. Yeah. She's like, why are you watching a cartoon? She's like, you don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand. This is like finally <laughs> what I read for years on the yeah, screen. That's so this great. is real acting. This yeah. is real storytelling. That's so cool. I don't want to apologize for that's watching so this. Cool. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, we were very lucky. We're very lucky. Very. Absolutely. My God. Um, you know, I wanted to go back to uh, an episode that is kind of synonymous Two Kingdom Come, although, again, it's the alternate universe version, that Justice Lords Lord. uh, uh, thing. And, George, yeah, I mean, you know, that was obviously – that's the Superman that did cross the line. And yeah. also got in that great um, uh, cold opening before we get to the credits and stuff, that smile on his face where right. he's finally right. gotten rid of Luther. And yeah. it's like, actually, I feel pretty good right now. And it's like, wow. <laughs> Very few times that he really gets to get to have that moment. It's usually on to the next thing. You never, there's never taken, never taken a breath, honestly. But. So was that fun? I mean, is that is that great to be able to play that that oh, uh, flavor of, of the it's character and everything? Always the best. Always the best. It's every actor will tell you it's best to play a villain or not a villain, but uh, something dark with a smile, or you know, vice versa. It's always easier to play. Have uh, you seen Scandal? Did you see Scandal? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I played, I played I mean, an assassin who got to actually have fun, which was you know, and make jokes. Yeah. Right. Absolutely, man. No, you were fantastic. And, and really, it's so great. To, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, to, to go from Father of the Bride to, and also a lot of those those roles that you had through the 90s and stuff. I know, I'm either like the best guy or the worst guy. <laughs> right. Absolutely, right. that's the worst, yeah. That's outstanding, man. All right, Jimmy, uh, the animated series was great for diversity as well because my first experience with an African-American superhero ever yeah. was John Stewart Green Lantern, so much so that when, and again, much like when... Um, 
the Spider-Man movies were happening, but when Green the, the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie happened, everyone's like, uh, where's John Stewart? Because yeah. millions knew John Stewart. And I would say generationally, Mark, you'd likely agree as uh, us old comic book readers and stuff, as much as we love Hal Jordan and all the other ones, uh, television, uh, you know, John is the is the guy for millions oh, who's yeah. Green Lantern. It's been great to watch that, that that to you and me, it was Hal Jordan all yeah. our lives growing up. And then John Stewart, the fact that so many African-American kids mm-hmm. had someone that looked like them who was right. a superhero on the screen. That was so awesome. And I, I you know, Hal great how you go over stand over there you know this is john's yeah. moment yeah you guys are much more histor- history buffs about all this stuff is, is, was that more prevalent in comics and animation before the other media forms with african-americans and other minorities being able to be uh, seen as lead characters in these things or were they was that first comic in your film uh kind of john stewart had shown up a few times yeah. in the 70s uh, just sort of passing through just a supporting character they check in with every once in a while. I mean, I mean you got to remember the audience for c- funny books in America in the 60s, 70s, 80s was white kids. Predominantly, uh, yeah. White boys. Yeah, Black like, Panther was kind of the first of the right. uh, 60s that really broke through and, and made a mark. And certainly his involvement with the Fantastic Four and the Avengers certainly helped. But yeah, John Stewart was a backup Green Lantern. Yeah, and, really, and also the yeah. second, or no, was was Guy first or, or uh, John? Tech Guy was first, or second. So he was like second lead, okay. you know, or second alternate, right? And, third string quarterback, if you will. Yeah, right. and so so like you said, so it it really, as much as anything, the cartoon show really did contribute to this idea of they don't all have to be white guys, you know, they no. don't all have to look like us, no, and. That's great. How many African American writers were there, you know, um, to write those characters? There, there weren't. That's just it. Then there, right. how, many, plot, right? how, many, how many how many women were there to write right. Wonder Woman? None. There was oh, yeah, right. why None it took so long woman, to get, yeah. which is why it took so long to get a feature. I mean, right. how many iterations of Batman? How many? You know, I, I love. Obviously, everyone knows I love Batman, right. but um, right. you know, and Superman. <laughs> but I mean, my God, you know, it took forever to right. get her animated. <laughs> To get her, uh, you know, a, a live action film, yeah. and and the the tri- the other Trinity members, you know, they some of those movies were good and some of them weren't good, but they were given another chance. Yeah. Whereas I don't know if if Wonder Woman had not succeeded and hadn't been as extraordinary as it was, uh, I don't know how long it would have taken to get another movie out of that. No, I don't think there would have been a Justice League movie. I don't think there would have been anything past that. I think that right. that would that would have been the yeah the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern curse, and that would have right. just kind of slammed the cut the the yeah, yeah. lid down on that coffin. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, and I believe there is uh, something brewing in the GL universe. Eventually, I'm not exactly sure what it is. Oh, I'll tell you, it's the uh, they they're HBO Max. They're doing a, a okay. like an on like an ongoing miniseries or whatever. Wow. So it's, with cinematic values, with with it's. It's done by a you know a lot of the movie people and so forth. It's it's going to be done big budget, but it's you know like a ten episode, like Watchmen was. This, you know, this is what it's all going to be. I don't think many yeah. people go to the movies yeah. anymore. I think it's just, just oh. all going to. I'm honestly, I think it's this pandemic has really changed. Yeah. stuff, I think you know. Here's but here's it, a here's a sad question for you. What's yeah. the last movie you saw in a movie theater? I'm trying to think. Someone asked me that, and I swear I can't remember. I know I, that in the last year I have, but it's not. Right. Not much. Not much. Like maybe. No. I, I, I want it because honestly, that comes up a lot. I believe mine was Ad Astra because as a SAG member, I do get screeners now ah, for yeah. the SAG Awards. So honestly, yeah. I was kind of spoiled with I everything know. that came late in the year. Right. And so, right. yeah, I just, and there was nothing at the beginning of the year that really intrigued me. Yeah. I was ready to see Bloodshot. I was ready to see Birds of Prey yeah. in the theaters. And then COVID hit. So, yeah. 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 You know, Seriously, I mean, what about you? I, I, can't, Same. I, I mean, it's been a, I, you know, I don't, it's been a while. 1917. Again, I, I saw 1917. I, that's what I saw. Which what was one? it? 1917. Well, yeah, you that's went on a, a good note because I, 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 won't, I won't name mine, but it was wretched. And so that's, that's <laughs> really disappointing. Yeah. Um, but I think you're right, George. I mean, I think that's, yeah. I mean, look Some at what did be big, you know, like yeah. uh, whatever the James Cameron movie that decides what's the, uh, um, you know, the, the big green guys. What's the, what's Avatar? the movie? Avatar. Avatar. Now that I want to see in a movie theater. Right. And that's when it comes out. I want to see that in yeah. big, big, big. But that's well, it. Nolan. 
That's Nolan and Tenet. I mean, every everyone who saw Tenet is like, you got to right. see it not only on a big screen, but on, yeah. in IMAX to right. really get the full effect. Yeah. No, I, I I hear you. Absolutely. All right, I got to put uh, all of you on the spot because it was an interesting polarizing movie last year, and it certainly got acknowledged by the award people. Uh, Joker. What do we think of Joker as someone who has played in the DC universe? All of you. You guys go uh, first. I thought Did it you was see it, George? Really, yeah, it's really disturbing, but really good. I mean, really, really well done. As I don't know how I, I could couldn't give you an analysis of how it compares to all the other things, iterations, but I think you know it was pretty, pretty damn well done. It's a pretty great piece of art, but dark and disturbing, as it would be. Susan, so uh, yeah, yeah, no, I I agree with that. Um, I, you know, I. The, the artistry is there. The, I'm just, I'm not a dark person when it comes to my comics. I, yeah. I, I, I know it's always existed and I know it's there. And I know that that's always been a mainstay in terms of the book until in terms of the comics. But I, I, I think it's all gotten so dark and I, I find, I don't like that. I, mm. I think that one of the beefs I had with Justice League was I just thought, how can kids come to this movie? Yeah, it just was so scary, and mm -hmm. I thought, you know, there's got to be some light and and some, you know, I don't know enough about Joker and Batman and all these characters that in their darkness, um, but I don't gravitate toward it. That's what I'll say. Um, I prefer some good old fashioned good versus evil with the evil not being so evil. Can there's I enough evil that? in the world that I don't now that we, do, you know, I I I like some earnest escapism that's not going to give me nightmares yeah there's not enough of that actually now it used to be the mainstream now it's the exception so you got to stay oh. in the exception route yeah. anymore because it's everything so dark and gray it's good to yeah. have yeah. that are a little lighter you know for sure yeah i mean the only yardstick you can really use to measure art is did it achieve what it set out to succeed did it succeed to you know achieve what it set out to achieve and in that sense yes joker did yes. that it was taxi right. driver it was very scorsese um and on an artistic level, I was blown away on a, th that the experience was really something, but yeah. man, I came out of that theater wanting a stiff drink. I yeah. really did. Yeah. That was sure. tough. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. God. There's no one to root for in that movie. Oof. No. no. Right. Yeah. Well, as you said, Mark, uh, the, the echoes of Taxi Driver, King of Comedy were yeah. very clear for us old movie buffs yeah. that know those references. Did and we at have first- to use the word old in that sentence, John? I'm I know, I think I'm only speaking about, about myself, uh, says, and I'm, and I'm making age, out weight. I won't deny that. All right, I know. Don't say that, John. We're this is every time you say that. That's true. We're not. We're not, all right. We're not old. You're absolutely right, and we're doing good. We're all doing good. But no, I, okay. I, all, all I was going to say was I agreed with Mark, and also at first I didn't. I mean, as a as a lifelong comic book reader, I didn't agree with a lot of the choices, but I couldn't deny that the movie was sitting with me and it was yeah. in the back. It lived in my head for yeah. weeks afterwards. Yeah. And I'm like, well then, you know, that's good art. I mean, yeah. if it's oh, it good if art you're thinking about it. Yeah. Then, sure. then they achieve something. And so, yeah, yeah I, I, my, my, my opinion has uh, evolved if you will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, we only have a couple minutes left. Um, let's see here. I'm just seeing if there's any other uh, interesting questions. Um, Oh, well, you know, and just a comment from Jimmy. He's getting tired of evil Superman all over media, movies, and games. What happened to hope? Well, again, in the right hands, right, uh, right. we do get hope. And, yeah. I, and again, and in the right performances was, as well. Yeah, we, give, we give that to you. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, um, I have, I have written I'm my first game, game tomorrow. tomorrow. I'm, sure, I'm, I'm recording another a Superman game tomorrow. Oh. Hey, awesome. And, you yeah. know, seriously, yeah. Yeah. great way to transition as we do yeah. wrap up and yeah. see what everybody's doing and, and anything everybody sure. would like to, to plug. Susan, please start. Oh gosh, let George start because he just no, no, started I, talking. About it's a game from Warner Brothers. Uh, it's just Do Doken something or other. I don't know. I don't know games very well, but anyway, I'm doing. But something. you do a lot of them. Well, uh, yeah. So I'm doing it. I'm doing game as Superman and the Warner Brothers games tomorrow from my booth, which is the first time I've done that. So this is I do the through the live thing with a real live signal, not just a Zoom call. So through Source Connect. So I've never done it. It's, it's cool. Oh, I've done it. It's I it, like it. I, oh, yeah. I may never go to another studio again. It's, I'm, I'm, it's, actually, frankly, I'm good. If, as long as if you were just going to go there by yourself, I just assume do it from here, honestly. Yeah, no, it's pretty brilliant. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I guess, you know, the thing on my horizon is, uh, you know, Masters of the Universe um, and playing Sorceress. So that 
that's I'm excited for people to see that and and you know and um, there are a couple of things on the horizon beyond that, but I can't talk about them. So, um, but you know, source was was a kick. That was fun. That came out of like left field. So, thank you. And Kevin an interesting, Smith. Uh, exactly, an interesting showrunner and Kevin Smith and an all star yes. cast. Uh, we've all seen the credits, and it, we're all waiting in anticipation on uh, what He Man is going, the Masters of the Universe is going to look like in those hands. Yeah, it'll, it, I mean, the, the scripts were. Stunning. I mean, I it was so emotional, and I I didn't know much about that universe. I have to be honest. And reading the script, um, you know, it, they got me. They really did. The writers were just terrific. So I'm looking forward to it. That's awesome, Mark. A lot of rumors swirling around what might be in your plate for 2021, and I don't know how much you can or can't say. I can. All I can say at this point is I did write my first Superman story in 15 years. Come ah. on comes out in about five weeks. Wow. wow. It's a real short thing, but it was part of a bigger. Th- crossover thing but it's all about hope it's all about hope that's what it's about. oh yay yay it's, it's yay, all about it's all about hope. superman showing people love that it. there is a tomorrow love so, it wow wow well, you it. know after what we're going through right now I, we, we need we need that right now we'll take it <laughs> perhaps we'll down the road timing. and and well it's more of a it's a clark lois story but of course mark wrote an amazing short story years ago called forget me not that oh, I, I absolutely oh, sure, man yeah. my god and it really does capture uh, a, an interesting Superman. If everyone should look up the paperback, The Further Adventures of Superman. You can find it on Amazon used. It's absolutely worth getting. And there are incredible short stories in there. And Mark's Forget Me Not is really one of the highlights of the book. Absolutely. You're very kind. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, kids, we got to run. But uh, honestly, right. thank you, guys. Great delight. Excellent thank questions, you. everybody. I'm sorry we couldn't get to more of them, but this was incredible. Yeah. And uh, truly, you're all, uh, and uh, forgive me for. I don't mean to obligate you, but would love to have you all solo on Word Balloon to talk more about your amazing careers. Susan and Mark have had a lot of uh, conversations. George, if you got time, uh, you I, I could I could think of a lot of IMDb uh, things out there that I'd love to talk <laughs> to you about. So that would be great. Right. Well, thank uh, you. Have a good good, uh, good. Is it Sunday? What is it? Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, time, Sunday. time with no meaning. Yeah, it's a yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. Absolutely. And you know, folks, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what. We'll just take a, a little brief uh, break. Maybe I'll refill my glass. Uh, because we're about to have an amazing uh, top of the hour conversation uh, celebrating Power's 20th anniversary, uh, an incredible book that uh, came out of uh, Image years ago and uh, really blew us all away and I think really set the tone in a lot of ways for a lot of uh, stories that that followed that. And uh, oh. the creators of Power's, Brian Bendis and uh, Mike Oming will join me. Right. All so, right. Guys, thank you. Thanks thank again. You. It was lovely. Thank you. Thank and, you. And, thank and, you. And, and George, thank you so much. You nice, to, nice to meet you, Mark. We'll hopefully see okay. you in person. Hope so. Okay. All right. Take take care, care, everybody. Thank you very much. And stick around, folks. More mainframe Comic Con coming up.